Betaflight 4.2 is just around the corner. And I just did a humongous deep dive into the Betaflight 4.2 release notes and tuning notes. And I know almost everybody isn't going to watch the whole thing. So this video is a quick and dirty here are the main things that are new in Betaflight 4.2 that you're going to want to change when you first install it and like just how to do it. I'm Joshua Bardwell and you're going to learn something today. So you've just flashed Betaflight 4.2. The first thing you need to know is do not just go paste your old config back into Betaflight 4.2. Too much has changed. You can still paste in some parts of your config that are safe, but other parts you're definitely going to want to leave out, mostly the parts related to the PIDs and the filters. I've got another video about how to transition from Betaflight 4.0 to 4.1 that calls out the safe parts of the configuration that are okay for you to paste in, like your aux modes and your ports tab and other parts that are not safe to paste in. Even if you have some preconceptions about your PIDs, like you think, oh, I always have to raise my eye gain, don't just assume that Betaflight 4.2 is gonna need that too. At least try the defaults except for the things I'm gonna tell you in here, which I think you're probably gonna to wanna to change. The very first thing you need to do before you start setting this quadcopter up is you need to get bi-directional D-shot and RPM filtering working. That's gonna surprise some people because you may think of RPM filtering as like this really esoteric feature. It's not. It's like if you said, I'm gonna sell you a car, but it doesn't have anti-lock brakes or seat belts. Okay, maybe it's not as fundamental as seat belts. But it is a really, really significant feature to make your quad fly better. Every quadcopter can support it, whether you've got BL Heli 32 ESCs, or it used to be you couldn't get it on BL Heli ESCs, but now you can. Almost every quadcopter can run bi-directional D-shot and RPM filtering, and you should. This isn't the video to tell you how to set it up. I have a video about that. It's linked in the video description. If you don't have that set up and running, stop, go, get it working and come back here. The next thing you're gonna to need to do is set your PID loop frequency. If you're using an F7 processor, you can use 8K and 8K. And in fact, you're gonna notice that you can't change the gyro update frequency anymore. That's locked out for reasons that we're not gonna go into because this isn't the deep dive video. If you're using an F7 or an F405 processor on your flight controller, then you're fine to use 8K. If you are using an F411 processor, you should use 4K. Next, you need to choose your motor protocol. And the motor protocol that you choose depends on your PID loop frequency and whether or not you're running bi-directional D-shot. But you are running bi-directional D-shot, right? Information we need is straight in the Betaflight tuning guide. If you're running an 8K PID loop, you need to run D-shot 600. If you're running a 4K PID loop, you need to run D-shot 300. And if for some reason you're running a 2K PID loop, and you need to run DSHOT 150. If you're not sure, or frankly, it's a good idea to do this test even if you think you are sure, you're gonna to go to the CLI and you're gonna type tasks. And what you're gonna to wanna to look at is the gyro, the filter, and the PID rate. And what you wanna see is that is dead bang on as close to the set rate as possible. So in my case, I've got them set to eight kilohertz and they are exactly 8,000. That's what you wanna see. If they are, you may need to run it a couple times, but you see when I'm doing it, it's just 8,000 every freaking time. That's the ideal and that's really what you want in order to get your RPM filters as precise as possible and make your quad fly as good as possible. It's better to go down from 8K to 4K if you have to, than to run at 8K and have it be a little bit inaccurate. Don't push it. If you are right on the edge, especially if you have an F4 processor, there are a few things you can do to improve your loop time. Some of them are disabling sensors like the accelerometer, barometer, and magnetometer, assuming that you're not using them. Like many of us won't have a barometer or a magnetometer, but we've all got an accelerometer. If you're not doing any auto level or GPS stuff, disabling the accelerometer will help save just a little bit of loop time. And the other thing you can do is go into the black box tab and you can disable black box debug mode if you have it on. 
you can reduce the black box logging rate, and you can even go in and completely disable the black box logging device. That assumes that you don't intend to do any black box logging, but having done that, you will get a little bit more consistent uh, loop times and maybe that'll get you from running 4K to 8K if you're right on the edge. The next thing we're gonna do is adjust feed forward smoothing. And if you wanna know more about the details of this, that's what the deep dive video is for. Here is the short and sweet. If you are a typical freestyle pilot flying with a HD cam on your quad, you're gonna to wanna to go to the CLI and type set FF underscore interpolated SP equals at average three. If you are a racer who wants the absolute sharpest stick response and lowest latency possible, even if it means you get a little bit of jitters in your video and maybe your motors aren't quite as smooth as they could be, you're gonna set FF interpolated SP equals on. And if you are a Cinewhoop pilot who wants the absolute smoothest video possible, even if it means a reduction in stick feel and responsiveness, you're gonna set FF Interpolate SP to average four. Betaflight 4.2 has a new feature called Dynamic Battery Sag Compensation, which gets rid of the experience where at the end of a battery, you hit the throttle and the voltage sags and you crash into the ground or something. What it does is when the battery is full, it makes the motors have as much power as they would when the battery was almost empty. So you lose some top end power when the battery is full, but you get consistent stick feel across the entire battery. Now, if that sounds like a terrible idea to you, then don't turn this feature on. It is not on by default. But especially if you're a racer, most racers I know don't care so much about absolute top end. They would rather have consistency. You can enable this feature by typing set VBAT underscore SAG underscore compensation equals 100. If you do that, you also need to turn off the feature VBAT underscore underscore PID gain equals off. I think it's off by default, but turn it off just to be sure. In my previous tutorial, when I showed you how to set up RPM filters, I told you that you need to set the dynamic notch filter to low. Betaflight 4.2 has removed the low, medium, high presets from the dynamic notch filter and just let you turn, oh, you, you're probably wondering why my gyro, why my RPM filter isn't enabled. This is just a test flight controller. I'm not actually, turn, I haven't actually turned that on. I'm just making a video here. This is not building a quadcopter. Moving on. <laughs> Betaflight 4.2 has removed the low, medium, high preset in favor of just letting you set the actual min and max frequency. Uh, for a typical five inch mini quad that would have uh, the dynamic filter set to low when using RPM filters, you're gonna set the min, the min hertz. Well, that's the same as it was. I think I had you set it to, maybe it was 90, maybe it was 70. I can't remember the exact value. And then the max, the equivalent of the low preset on 4.1 is 350 hertz. So you're gonna to wanna to set that. Basically, I'll do, I'll do the other ones. The width percent is zero. The notch cue is 250. The min is somewhere between 60 and 90. I can't remember. And the max is gonna be 350. That's the new piece of information that's new to Betaflight 4.2. One more thing, and this is really just a cosmetic thing, but I kind of love it. Um, if you have a custom pilot logo that you have uploaded via the OSD tab, you normally only see that when you first plug in the battery, which means like most of the time you don't even see it because nobody's looking. Um, you can have it appear every time you arm the quad by typing set OSD underscore logo on arming equals, and you can set it either to on, which will show every time you arm, or first arming, which will show the first time you arm and everybody can see your cool pilot logo. There's two other things I wanna mention before we finish up the video. One is if you use stick arming instead of switch arming, Betaflight has disabled that by default. It's really better to use stick uh, switch arming, but it, if you're using stick arming in this day and age, you've probably got a good reason. And if you need to use it, you can turn it back on in the CLI. Set enable stick arming equals on. I'm not gonna do that. And the final thing is that Betaflight has a new way of calculating rates. The default way of calculating rates is the same way it's always been done. But the new way makes it actually easier to tweak the rates in a more intuitive way. And it might be worth it to convert your rates over from the old one to the new one 
if you if you're still working on your rates and tweaking them it might be worth it i have a separate video about how to convert your rates to the new method and it's linked in the playlist in the video description which is all my beta flight 4.2 videos that is going to do it that's the main things that are different about beta flight 4.2 that you're going to need to deal with other than just like how you normally fly there's a full tuning guide linked in the video description from the straight from the developers about how if you want to go really more in depth but those that's a, the short and dirty version hope it's been helpful i hope i'm really looking forward to beta flight 4.2 finally releasing or maybe by the time you're watching this is already out and we find out if it lives up to all the promise of being oh, amazing because let's face it beta flight 4.1 a lot of people were a little disappointed with some aspects of it a lot of people loved it some people didn't is beta flight 4.2 going to be amazing only time will tell. I'm just, thank you. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, thank you so much for watching. Happy flying. <laughs>